We're up to episode 6 of Midnight Gospel. Things are getting serious. I get the sense that they're now introducing plot elements and there's some kind of danger for Clancy or something like that. The house was flipping out at the end of last episode. The show has been really good for me because it's been making me reflect on a lot of things. Even when I don't agree with what the guests are saying, I always come away having thought about something new. I already feel like it's influenced my life in some ways or at least in the way I think about my life these days. Yeah, let's get started. You're in the this is maybe the first episode that didn't start with good morning. Hello. Clancy, it's Sarah. Welcome to the official voicemail of Clancy Gilroy. So I've edited this out for the most part. There is a running plot kind of with Clancy and his sister. He borrowed the money to buy this galaxy thing or whatever. What is it called? Universe simulator. And he owes her money. I just want you to know I love you. I know you moved to the ribbon to get a new start, but Clancy, no matter where you go, things are always going to be the same if you don't change. That's Cold true. Mahatma. And wherever there's a rainbow, you can be sure that God's footprint Voicemail full. Message Oof. not received. The way I've always heard it is wherever you go, there you are. I definitely agree with this on a fundamental level. You cannot escape your problems just by leaving where you are and starting in a new environment. But that being said, I feel like sometimes it does help you gain perspective on certain things in your life. If you go to a new environment and try new things, and do things in a little bit of a different way than you did before, it does help you kind of look back and see things more clearly sometimes. I felt that way when I first went to Korea. I went there because I kind of felt stuck. I didn't know who I was. I felt like I kind of wrote myself into a corner. And going to Korea didn't solve the bigger problem, which was lack of direction, not knowing what I wanted to do. But it definitely did help me grow as a person because I was in this new environment and had to adapt. And I, I could look back at my old environment and see what was important and what was not important. It gave me a broader perspective, I guess. So I think starting over like Clancy's doing sometimes can be really beneficial if you do it the right way. I think there are a lot of ways you can go wrong as well. Like living in Asia, you see a lot of people who are in Korea or China, let's say, who are there to escape their old lives, but they don't try anything new. They kind of repeat the same existence they had before. They make the same kind of friends. They do the same exact kinds of activities. They make the same mistakes. They're not actually there to grow. They're there for, I don't know. They can't actually move past their habits and who they are. But I think Clancy's doing it right. He shouldn't have stolen from his sister, but he left to start this great undertaking of this space cast, multi-universe space cast. He's meeting all these interesting people. He's having in-depth conversations. So no doubt doing it this way will be good, even if it doesn't solve your deepest problems. Interesting character development for Clancy. He's trying not to look at something, which is kind of the broader topic of a lot of the conversations is about honesty and looking at things openly without deluding yourself. Good, good morning, Clancy. Time to escape Where into the will you universe today? sim. Or this one, or this one, or this one. What's going on? This planet doesn't have an X. You chose two-way mirror bubble planet. All sentient bubbles on this planet have popped from oh, loneliness. No. <gasps> from loneliness? Wait. Can't tell who's more alone. Is it me or you? Let's not go to this planet. To what happened to Met Mercuritaville? That sounded fun. Is that still open? Wait, 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 wait. Simeon, I can cheer him up. Target bubble man. Oh man, remember what we were talking about two lonely people? Can two lonely people help each other? FAQ, FAQ. Please read the FAQ. Just open any of the 40 messages I've sent to you. Can I read it? Is it worth reading? Your universe simulator depends on the green oil that you milk from your lantern head. Your universe simulator will go insane and eventually wobble. Oh my god. How do I know if my simulator is going insane? I'm so glad you asked this question, master. Do you ever wonder if you can see your own eyes? What does your last answer mean? Eyes, 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 eyes. Nice little touch there. So the simulator obviously going insane. Please read the FAQ. Interesting. Looks like we're staying home today. More like pie mess. <laughs> very funny, master. V very, very funny. Isn't it odd that you can never see your own eyes? Yep. Uh -oh. So we got a lot of plot suddenly. I wonder what he's running away from. Did he just walk a What? How? I guess I don't really know anything about the real world that Clancy lives in. That was bizarre. Is he actually in a real place? Or is it? I'm so... Something's wrong. There's something creepy about this whole thing. Something's just off. Well then, let's take what's ours to glorify the progenitor. We're close by Are they world destroyers or something? And waste such treasure. Yeah, shut up, Tart Baker. You're not Tart Baker. They're both Tart Bakers. 
<laughs> hey, I just want to stop by. We haven't met yet. I'm your neighbor, Clancy. You wanted to say hi, and I brought you a pie, Messiah. Better come back. Okay, I will. This is okay, sad. All fucking day making you a pine messiah. You're gonna do that to your person who lives right down the way from you. He's losing it. Vibes. While you were gone, I baked something for you. I messiah. Oh no. Is that the same thing that came out of the guy's uh, heart when he was reincarnating? My name's Clancy, and I think my simulator's it's pouring out purple smoke. It's kind of like being a YouTuber but not wanting to learn about cameras because you're too stubborn. I don't know. I kind of bit off more than I could chew. Typically by now, the podcast or whatever would have started. For the first time in episode six, we're like exploring Clancy's world, which is interesting. This unlucky looter broke in and found himself inside a patch of purple wobble. That's the kind oh, that no. locks you in time. Recently, I feel locked in time. I'm, when can I'm I go outside? Yep, just as I thought. Brussels sprouts. Pickle, it is? Right. Whoever said cartoons can't be educational. Master, sir, I, I can see my eyes. I can see your, your, your eyes. This is our eyes. Boom. The, the, the eyes. Impressive. Have it. Good morning. Have it. <laughs> what does that remind me of? You can have it. Master, it's become clear to me I don't that you've been you avoiding tell dealing me with the real world I by going into my many universes. My May I suggest meeting my good friend Dave? He's a meditation master. Even the crazy simulator is talking some sense. I want to your friend David. All right, this is going to be the podcast. That was a lot of plot. Rage! Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Here are three principles we could at least check out. First one, silence. Giving you room to listen. Second one, stillness. Giving you room to feel. Third one, spaciousness. Just giving you room. I wonder if I left the faucet on. Man, bees are amazing. My sister's allergic to bees. The silence is extra potent in a show like this because usually so many things are going on. That was a very impactful moment. I did it. David, David, I did it. Do you think you could help me untangle myself? Very yeah. direct metaphor there. <laughs> if you're caught up in your story, it's like living in a tiny apartment with just enough room for you and your little mattress. The moment you get a little space between yourself and your thoughts, it's like moving into a much bigger house. It's a nice metaphor. I like that. Then there's room to invite people in. There's space for you, and there's space for them. Your mind is overcrowded. Then you go, well, what if I just emptied my mind? Right. Just empty your mind. Well, go ahead and try. Can it even yeah, be done? It's tough. Yes. You could learn how to do that, but it's, it isn't the goal. And a lot of people teach meditation as if the goal is to, to treat your mind like a unruly teenager and, and make it shut up right yeah i think that was what put me off for meditating for so long is that i think it's it's represented incorrectly a lot of the time like when you first hear about it it's about emptying your mind but if you sit down with the goal of emptying your mind completely there's just no way that's going to happen the only time i ever did meditation seriously for a prolonged period of time with any kind of results was when i did some kind of techniques that are not about emptying your mind but focusing on other things and then just practicing it and also not being so results oriented about it but rather just being kind of open and like watching yourself watching your brain go off and not resisting it but kind of just observing it and i remember really getting into it it's something that i've been thinking about starting again for some reason it's terrifying to do meditation like because it's it's a lot of work you have to actually be very mentally conscious it's a little bit intimidating going into because i don't know it requires something more than what it seems it's not like you're supposed to shove some kind of bud plug in the <laughs> asshole of your mind okay <laughs> more like it's accepting there's this infinite swarm of thoughts and that by understanding that you're not necessarily as connected to them as you thought it allows which is what this is talking about you don't have to kind of grasp and dwell on that as the only solution for continuing to be alive wow. there's other option which is to use the sense percept to arrive back at the present cut to commercial <laughs> <laughs> what's happening i'm, like, I'm gonna cheat and freeze frame that. The oh that's the uh it's them having the podcast i guess that's him that's duncan trussell more shoes oh. hype shoes Thank you. Think nothing of it. Well, the horn's working again. That's cool. That was the shortest conversation that the show has had so far. But in some ways, I feel like it was one of the best. He said a lot with very little words. That guy obviously would be a great meditation teacher. 
I just feel at peace listening to him talk. <laughs> Thanks, computer. You're welcome, master. Computer is a good, good hey, guy. Good thing. Call me Clancy, the enlightened one. Oh, damn. Uh -oh. What's the shoes about? I'm trying to figure that out since last episode. Weird. Just when you think you had this show figured out. I don't know what to make of that. We're building some kind of background on Clancy, that he has some kind of emotional problems, that he's avoiding something. And the computer's trying to help him out by sending him to places to learn how to deal with his anger, or deal with his emotional stress. I like that episode a lot. I also think it's interesting that this was the least chaotic episode so far in terms of the animation story. That's not a coincidence because it's about meditation and clearing your mind of clutter. It's actually nice to have kind of a break from the zany action. There was no big like boss sequence. I'm very, very curious about the last two episodes. I'll see you for episode seven.